Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Unit 6 test review. Our test is going to be on Wednesday this week, um, and this is going to help you get ready for it. So um, everything you're going to see here is going to be like what we see on the test. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask me or, you know, review this video um, again if you need to. Right, we're going to start with number one, create a Venn diagram to represent the following information and answer the questions that follow. All right. Um, in a survey of 100 high school students, that might be, I might have to edit that number. I, I might, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, it was found that here we have our results. 54 students have computers, 61 students have cell phones, 49 students have TVs, 21 students have both a computer and cell phone, 23 students have blah, 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 right? Et cetera, et cetera. So to make our Venn diagram, we're going to have to have, of course, in this case, three circles, one, two, and three. I probably could look a little bit better, but you know, is what it is. Um, so let's put computers here. We'll put cell phones here, and then we'll put TVs here. All right, now we always start these Venn diagrams with the most um, unique and uh, narrowed focus area, which is the all three items. 15 students have all three items. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna have this 15. Uh, down here in, in the center. Now, the reason why we don't start at the top, for example, is, you know, so it says 54 students have computers. A lot of people think about putting a 54 here, right? But this is incorrect. And the reason it's incorrect is because, you know, computers should have in total 54. So these 54 students have computers. It's not just computers. Some of these 54 students will have a cell phone. Some of these students will have TVs. And so we have to get those overlap regions first before we can find out how many people have computers um, and only computers. So this isn't 54 students have only computers, it's 54 students have computers in general. So you have to find out how many of these students, these 54 students have a cell phone, how many have a TV, find those values first. Um, and then, you know, fill in the Venn diagram that way. So that's why we start with the middle, 15. We know 15 have all three. There's no, nothing changing that. Now, next one says 31 students have both a cell phone and a TV. So a cell phone and a TV, that is, let me use the highlighter tool, uh, cell phone, right, is this circle, and TV. TV is this circle. So if they have a cell phone and TV, then they're in this green region. Now that should be 31 in total, but as you can see, we already have 15 accounted for there. 15 of the 31's already there. So then there's 16 remaining um, between the cell phone and TV, right? Which as you can see now it's a total of 31 in that region, which is what we were looking for. All right, so let's look at the next one. 23 students have both a computer and a TV. So again, a computer, that's this circle, right? And the TV, that's this circle. Now, and a TV, computer and a TV is the overlap region again, which is again, you see here in green. It says there are 23 students have a computer and a TV. So 23 should be the total of this region. We already have 15 there. So to make it a complete 23, I'll add eight more because eight plus 15 makes 23. So I know that I'm gonna fill in that little space there with an eight to make that total 23, if that makes sense. Um, and then finally, for the top part here, we have 21 students have both a computer and a cell phone. So again, to really illustrate this computer is this circle, uh, cell phone, is this circle. And just like the others, the and part is the overlap part, which is green. Uh, it says 21 students have both a computer and a cell phone. So this green part should be total of 21. We already have 15 here, which means we add six more, we would get 21. So we're gonna include a little six there. All right. So now we can go into the bigger circles. 49 students have TVs. So, 49 students have TVs. Well, here's the TVs, right? Remember, some of those 49, if we've already counted, some of those 49s have a cell phone. Some of them have a computer, right? Some of them have both. 
So if there's 49 people in total with a TV, then I have to subtract out the people I've already counted. So 49 minus the 16 minus the 15 minus the eight, uh, I think it's 10. Um, 15, 16 is 31. Uh, plus eight would be 39 and it's 49. So yeah, so there would be 10 left over uh, that have just a TV. And that is in total now of 49 people with a TV. All right, let's look at the next one. The next statement says, I can't erase this for some reason. There it goes. The next statement says 61 students have cell phones. Okay, so again, 61 students have cell phones. So cell phone, this should be a total of 61. Remember, we've already counted, let's see, 31 plus six, 37 people. So we have 37 people here, and this is supposed to add up to 61. Then there are uh, 24 people remaining that have just a cell phone. 24 plus 16 plus 15 plus six should add up to 61. All right, and then finally, the last one's computer. Uh, 54 students have a computer. We've already accounted for, let's see here, 29 of them. So 29 of them, but there are 54 in total. So 54 minus 29 is uh, 25. And now for the fun part, now we have to see how many students have none of these three things. So, the universal set is going to have anybody who doesn't isn't included in any of these circles. So let's see what these add up to first. <clears throat> so I know I have 61 in here. 61 plus 8 is 69. 69 plus 10 is 79. Yeah, and then 79 plus 25 is over 100, which is why I said I think I might have to change this to like 110. Um, just for today, just for because I, I didn't count these up earlier. Um, but I will double check it real quick. So give me one second. Yeah, so this adds up to 104. And so let's say there was 110 high schoolers in, in total. That would leave six students uh, who didn't have uh, any of these. The reason I had to change it is because if I had 104 students here, but I said that there were only 100 students in high school, then there's four like, where do these come from students, you know? Um, so I've already done on the test. I know the test numbers are good because I've already drawn out those Venn diagrams. But when I make this just for clarification, I, I just make these numbers up on the spot and I don't double check it till now. And that's fine because, you know, it's fine. Not a big deal. Just a small little tweak there and we're good. So the general idea is um, to know how much is going to be on the outside. You add these all up and subtract it from whatever your total is. So if there's 110 in total, and this adds up to 104. Well, that means there's six people unaccounted for that would go here. All right. Um, so now let's answer these questions. Use the Venn diagram below to determine the number of elements in each set described in the following questions. All right. So A and C. So again, if you want to use the um, highlighter tool, A is here, right? Uh, C is here. Don't pay any attention to B. A lot of people get preoccupied with the B circle, like it's in the way or something. Don't worry about the B circle. This has nothing. This doesn't say it can't be in B, right? It doesn't say it can't. doesn't say it can't. So you just don't worry about the B circle. Just focus on what I've highlighted, right? The A circle and the C circle. Now to be in A and in C, it's going to be in the green region overlapping, which is 6 and 8, as you can see. So that answer for this should be 14, because 6 plus 8, of course, makes 14. Oh my gosh, make this look a little bit better. Um, this pen's a little difficult today. I don't know why. Oh my goodness. Can't write the number 14. All right, the next one, A and not B. So A and not B. So A is this. Okay. And then not B. So let me highlight everything that's not B. So not B is everything around B. Right, be all of this stuff, all of this stuff that's not in B. I think you get the idea, right? 
Now, to be A and not B, these two shaded regions would have to overlap. Now, as you can see, A and not B overlap in this green region, which is 5 and 6, uh, which adds up to 11. So our answer there, 11. Now, um, C, so the next one is number of elements in C. So if we just circle C real quick, here is C. The number of elements in C is just adding these up, 11 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4. So that's 21, 29. So 29 elements in C. Now A or B, that's the next one. Uh, as you can see, number of elements in A or B. So again, let me highlight these for you. <clears throat> so A is this, B is this. Now this is different than the and. Because it's an or, A or B, anything highlighted counts. So it doesn't have to be the overlap. The and part would be an overlap. But if it's an or, then it's just everything highlighted in general. Or it doesn't the overlap part, the not overlap parts, anything that's highlighted. So A or B is the 5, 6, 3, 8, 9, and 4 all added together, which is, let's see here, uh, it'd be 10, so it'd be 27, 30, 35. If I added these up correctly, that should be 35. All right, um, next one, not A or B. Okay, so not A, let's start with that. So not A is everything that's outside of A. There we go. And then it said, or B. So let me go ahead and shade in B as well. There's B. All right. So again, not A or B. So the or, remember, is just anything that's highlighted. Okay. The and part would only be overlap. So if this was the and, it would only be this green part. But because it's an or, anything that's highlighted counts. Basically, everything except for the five and the six counts. So all the other numbers highlighted, you need to add up. So the seven, um, the 11, the three, the eight, the nine, the four, all add up, and that's 42. Oh, need to go back to pen. There we go. All right. So this one, A or B or C, but not. So A or B or C. So A is this. Or B is this, or C is this. So there's A or B or C. But because it's a complement and it's not that, anything now that's not highlighted is the actual answer because it's, it's the counter of what we've highlighted. So the seven is the only thing that's not highlighted here. Seven is the answer on this one. Now, A or B and C. So A or B and C. So let's start with B and C. So uh, B here, right? Um, and C is here. Now, if we focus on just this part, B and C, right? Let's go back down. B and C. This region that we're referring to is only the overlap, only the green. So really all I should be considering here is the green. So I'm going to keep the green section, but not have the other sections. So really just focused on this part. All right. So, but then it's or A. So or A. So we have to circle A. And there's our uh, shaded regions. All of A combined with all of B and C. So that's the 5, 3, 6, 8, and 4 all added together. So 5 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4. 
which is a total of 26. All right, and then finally, A or B and C. So A or B, start with that. So A is obviously all this. Oops, hold on, gotta go to the highlighter. And then B is all of this. So A or B would be all of that, A or B, everything that's highlighted. So this is all considered just one space for now. So let me go ahead and just make it all one color because um, we have to combine this eventually with C. So we're going to make this all just one color. So A or B is just all of A and all of B here. There we go. All right. So that's the A or B part. But now it says and C. So and is the overlap region with C. So I'm going to highlight C. And because it's an and, it's only the overlap part between these two regions, which is the six, eight, and the four. So that's a total of 18. All right. So now moving on to number three. A is 5, 7. B is RT. Find A times B. So remember, this is just a pairing thing. So um, A times B is equal to the set. We're, we're going to pair the 5 with both R and T. So that would be 5R and 5T. But also, you're going to have the 7 paired with both the R and the T. So 7R and 7t. The order of these four ordered pairs doesn't matter, but it does need to be these four ordered pairs. And so those are, that's the answer for that one. Uh, let's look at the next one. The next one is similar, but it's b times a. So it's going to be the reverse. b is going to come first, and then uh, the a is going to be second. So b times a. So similarly, but we're going to start with the B. So R is going to come first. It's going to pair with 5 and 7. So R5, uh, R7, and then followed by the T. So T5 and T7. Now you can see how these are similar, uh, but not quite the same as the ones above it, right? Kind of, They're kind of backwards versions of the other ones. So, but that is the correct set for B times A. Um, number five, um, you have a set A, two, four, six, eight, 10, and B, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Then find number of elements of A times B. So it's not asking for A times B, it just wants the number of elements of A times B. So A has, number of elements in A is five. There are five elements, one, two, three, four, five. Number of elements in B is also five. One, two, three, four, five. So the number of elements of them combined oops, uh, is 25. Five elements times five elements is 25 elements, which is your answer there. Just the number 25. We're not actually, so there would be 25 pairs. If you actually put out all the ordered pairs, you know, two, one, two, three, two, five, two, seven, two, nine, four, one, four, three. Four, five, four, seven, four, nine, et cetera, et cetera. You'd have 25 pairs. Um, and that's what we're doing here. But we can do that without actually writing out the pairs. But we just know that it's this five times this five, which makes 25. Similarly, number six, let A be one, two, three, four, and B be five, six, seven, eight. Then find number of elements A times A times A. So the number of elements in A is four. And we're going to be doing it three times. So that's four times four times four. Um, which in this case comes out to being uh, four times four is 16, times four is 64. So the answer here is 64. And again, it's just that. It's not asking for all the different pairs. It's just how many pairs would there be. And uh, I know that there would be four, 64 because you'd be doing four times another four times another four again. So like, you know, one, one, one would be a pair. One, one, two, one, one, three, one, one, four. 
And you keep doing that for a while, you're going to have 64 different combinations. All right. Generally, A times B is not equal to B times A. What is the exception? The exception is when uh, A equals B. If A equals B, then A times B and B times A are the same thing. Find values of X and Y. So remember, we talked about how these ordered pairs have to match. So like um, this is 5X plus 7 has to equal negative 8. And the 4X minus 9 has to equal 15. So we come up with these kind of equations to solve this. So 5X plus 7 has to be equal to negative 8. Right? Yeah, negative 8. So make sure it's negative. And then the 4X minus 9 has to be equal to the 15, right? Because x point equals x point, y point equals y point. Um, this probably should be a y here for this one. Again, another typo on my part. So we'll just let that slide. It's okay. I'll double check to make sure it's good on the test. I believe it is, but I definitely do need to double check it. All right, so let's solve these two equations for x and y. So this one just attracts 7. That's going to be 5x equals negative 15. So x will equal negative 3. And then for the blue one, for y, we'd add 9 to both sides, get 24. So 4y equals 24. Divide by 4, y is going to equal 6. So negative 3 and 6 are the two answers there. Uh, similarly, you got to do the same thing really on number 9. So 2x minus 4 has to equal 8. And then the 3x plus 7 has to equal 1. So uh, again, that should be a y. Um, another one of my errors. It's going to happen. It's OK. Um, I will make sure the test is fine, though. So we're going to add 4 to solve this one. That's going to be 2x equals 12. So here, x is going to equal 6. And then for the y side, subtract 7. It's going to equal, so 3y equals negative 6. Divide by 3, y is going to equal negative 2. So we have 6 and negative 2 for the x and y values there. So just simple equations to set up and solve. I think you guys can do that. All right, 10, 11, and 12, the GCF questions. Um, so 25 and 130, so let's break these down. So 25 uh, is 5 times 5, which are both prime. So that's pretty simple. 130, however, I know is 13 times 10. 13 is prime, but 10 is not. 10 is 2 and 5. So as far as um, values go, the common ones are going to be a 5. Yeah, they have a pair of fives in common. So we're going to have five in the middle, 25 here, 130 here. We'll have the additional five on the 25, and then we'll have the 13 and the two on the 130 side. And GCF is just going to be that five that they have in common. All right, let's look at 36 and 132. So 36 not 66, 36. Um, I know we can do six times six, but those aren't prime. So that's two times three. And of course, two times three again. So two, three, two, three are the prime factors there. If we look at 132, 132 is 12 times 11. Let me just double check that. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, 12 times 11. So 11 is prime. 12 is not. 12 is 3 times 4. 3 is prime, but 4 is not. It's 2 times 2. Um, all right, so let's list these out. So for 36, it's 2, 2, 3, and 3. And for 132, it's 2, 2, 3, and 11. So they have the 2, the 2, and the 3 in common. 
So 36, 132, 2, 2, and 3 in common. The 36 still has the 3, and the 132 still has the 11. But the GCF is the 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. So greatest common factor for these two is 12. All right, and then one last one. Um, I kind of ran out of room, but we'll uh, we'll make it fit, I guess. Um, thirty-eight and one thirty-three. So put them over here. Thirty-eight is nineteen times two, which those are both prime. And then what was the other number? One thirty-three. I don't know if 133 works with anything. 133 might actually be prime. Let me see, 133. I don't think I can divide it by three, nope. Yeah, I think it's prime, but let me just double check. Don't think there's anything else that'll work. Oh, nope. There is numbers, it's seven and 19, seven times 19, which are both prime. So um, so this tree is gonna be interesting. So we have, let me write them, write them down. First 38, we have two and 19, and then 133, we have seven and 19. So as far as the Venn diagram goes, you got 19 in common, and then 38, has the additional two and the 133 has the seven. But as you can see, they both have the 19 in common. So 19 is that GCF. All right, that's gonna do it for uh, this review video. Hopefully it helps. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in class and best of luck on the quiz or the test rather, but yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.